I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. The Venus, the sex goddess, the bombshell. Gilda, are you decent? Me? She's a knockout beauty who leaves a trail of drooling men and at least 5% of women in her wake. Here is how you know you're dealing with a woman of divine sensuality. The bombshell is the embodiment of our society's ideal of womanhood. Emphasis on the body. Magnificent view. It is, isn't it? She is all curves, even in eras where waifish beauty is more stylish. She's a sensualist who cares about enjoying life and living it to the fullest. Life's short and I want to live while I'm alive. She's also a materialist who loves anything that's beautiful and expensive. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Another thing she takes pleasure in is being looked at. A Venus lives by the male gaze, and men's attention gives her power in a male-dominated society. Well, on the way into town, I'll give you a lesson in geography. I think I've already had one. The bombshell is somehow treated as both above the rest of us, like a goddess taken human form. Ain't you never seen a naked chick riding a clam before? And below, like a wild animal or a simple child. You have the body of a woman and the emotions of a child. In her purest form, like the Greek goddess Aphrodite or Venus to the Romans, this woman embodies arguably the most important values of life, beauty and love. There are three things I like most, love, love and love. But she can also be a mirror of how little respect society often shows these values. You should be in the bra business, your work of art or how they can become twisted by jealousy and materialism. But in Vegas, for a girl like Ginger, love costs money. In the bombshell's darkest iterations, her sexuality is a weapon, which might end up destroying her. Here's our take on why there's so much more to the bombshell than her sexuality and what she deserves to get out of life beyond being adored. Are you watching Gloria in my sunglasses? Is she moving in slow motion or is my brain doing that? If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all our new videos. Thank you so much to RevTown for sponsoring today's video. Are you getting sick of wearing sweatpants every day? RevTown jeans offer an easy way to stay comfortable while graduating from slovenly to stylish. Their jeans feature Italian milled denim that's infused with athletic stretch yarn so you get premium jeans with the comfort of your favorite sweat. Just click the link in the description below to upgrade your wardrobe now. Love goddesses date back to prehistory, but the bombshell was born in sound cinema as Jean Harlow. Would you be shocked if I put on something more comfortable? Her 1933 film, Bombshell, gave birth to the bombshell label, implicitly comparing her beauty to a weapon of mass destruction. Why, right here in front of us, I see the beautiful Lola Burns, the bombshell herself, folks. Harlow popularized the blonde bombshell look in Platinum Blonde and gave us a heartless vixen twist on the trope with another eye-catching hair color in Red-Headed Woman. Through the actress's persona on screen and off, all the qualities of a bombshell coalesce. She's a head-turner who disarms men with her weaponized sexuality, she enjoys pleasure and wealth, and isn't known for her brains. I was reading a book the other day. Reading a book? Her turbulent life is full of a series of men, and there's a good chance that she's going to die young. She died of life. She gave it all to everyone else. And there wasn't enough left for her. In the 50s, Marilyn Monroe represented post-war bounty, a goddess come to life somehow both embodying and satirizing her era's materialism. Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty, but my goodness, doesn't it help? In the same era, Elizabeth Taylor was the definitive brunette bombshell to Marilyn's blonde, representing haughty self-possession and glamour. 
I do not intend to join that long list of queens who have quivered happily at being summoned by Lord Antony. I am the queen of Egypt, and I choose to remain on Egyptian soil. In A Place in the Sun, her aspirational beauty and the American dream she embodies are so irresistible to Montgomery Cliff's George Eastman that he ends up plotting to kill his poor pregnant girlfriend in order to pursue a life with Liz Taylor's Angela Vickers. Every time you leave me for a minute, it's like goodbye. I like to believe it I means you can't live without me. In the 60s, Europe had their own iconic brunette and blonde bombshells, Italian Sophia Loren and French Brigitte Bardot. In this era of increasing freedom, the bombshell became a symbol of sexual emancipation. Tu ferais pas une bonne épouse? J'aime trop m'amuser. Bombshells on film channel the love goddesses of ancient myth, and cinema excels at making their appeal feel majestic and surreal. Just as Aphrodite was born from sea foam, the sex goddess on screen is often associated with water. This becomes a symbol of how this impossibly alluring woman can't be possessed and will slip through your fingers like running water if you try. As Anita Ekberg blends into the falling water of the Trevi Fountain in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, Marcello Mastroianni's protagonist, like the camera, feels as though he can't quite touch her. The on-screen Venus is ultimately just a fantastic illusion made of light, a projection of the male gaze. When it's hot like this, you know what I do? I keep my undies in the icebox. In her groundbreaking essay, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, Laura Mulvey argued that cinema hinges on the male gaze, the way the camera becomes a man and looks at women as a man would. The bombshell feels purpose-built to yield pleasure to the male eye, sometimes literally, like when teen boys create their dream woman from a computer in Weird Science. What would you little maniacs like to do first? Jean-Luc Godard's Contempt opens with a male gaze that leers at Bardot's naked body, while she asks the protagonist if he likes every part of it. And the bombshell often appears in slow motion, as a purely visual delight separated from sound, because we don't need to hear her speak to understand her character. Often, the bombshell takes pleasure in the male gaze and feels empowered by the hold she has over men. So take a good look, Daddy. You're gonna be seeing an awful lot of this around the house. She performs the bombshell persona, knowing full well how to use her effect on people to her advantage. How do you sleep, with pajamas or night gown? Neither. I sleep only in two drops of French perfume. Because bombshells wield their sexuality, they represent one route to female empowerment. Mae West made her career from being a sexually empowered woman before such things were allowed. Hmm, is that a gun in your pocket or are you just glad to see me? The bombshell is also painted as animalistic in her sexuality. A literal sex kitten. Yet other versions of the bombshell despite their sexual potency, often project a childlike innocence. Laurence Olivier remarked that Marilyn Monroe's talent lay in bringing that innocence to all the innuendo in her films. Look at that face, he said on the set of The Prince and the Showgirl. She could be five years old. Well, maybe just a sip, maybe just a few. <laughs> The goddess Aphrodite personified the appeal of beauty, but also its pitfalls. She was wildly jealous, vain, fickle, and louche. There's also jealous love, and unrequited love, and tragic love. And when you strip away all the tinsel, it's really just about hormones, isn't it? Similarly, the bombshell embodies the contradictions of womanhood in society. She is a goddess and an animal, a seductress and a naive. She is put on a pedestal for her beauty, yet vilified for her promiscuity and materialism. 
God forbid I exude confidence and enjoy sex. For all that bombshells are revered and exalted in our culture. <laughs> sooner or later, they are also degraded and insulted. Megan Fox was vilified in the press both for being too sexy and for trying to break out of the bombshell box by expressing any agency or individuality. After Jennifer's body bombed, New York Times profiler Lynn Hirschberg put the film's underperformance squarely on Fox's sexy shoulders, writing, Not surprisingly, and despite the heavily publicized 64-second lesbian makeout scene, men did not buy many tickets. Neither did women, who tend to prefer movies that feature more approachable, less vixenish actresses, like Sandra Bullock or Jennifer Aniston. You don't know how hard it is being a woman looking the way I do. The bombshell is defined by her beauty, so her looks are her destiny. Since our culture values beauty, you'd think bombshells on screen would lead a blessed life. On the contrary, the stories we tell about sexually appealing women usually need to see them punished because of our society's oddly puritanical ideals about sex. Goodbye, baby. Harlow's sexually opportunistic vixen in Redheaded Woman may get away with her antics because that movie is pre-code. Listen, I'm on my way up to the boss's house with his mail. Maybe I'll get a chance to stay and take dictation. What'll that get you? Don't be dumb, his wife's in Cleveland. But from the 30s on, the restrictive Hayes Code required that sexually liberated women had to be cautionary tales who, by the end of the movie, were either married or dead. Consequently, filmmakers would often let us enjoy watching a doomed sex goddess character, but pair her with a frumpier, often darker-haired woman who gets to live because she's not too sexual. In Niagara, when frigid honeymooners Ray and Polly Cutler encounter Marilyn Monroe's vivacious character Rose at Niagara Falls, Ray is bewitched by her, especially compared to his unexciting wife. Why don't you ever get a dress like that? Monroe captures our attention and sympathy as a sexually provocative woman trapped in a violent marriage, but she's still dead by the end of the picture. We can see the tragic bombshell versus safe from dyad continue to play out in much later stories. Even a rom-com like Love Actually pits a vivacious Venus against poor Emma Thompson. I'd just be hanging around the mistletoe, hoping to be kissed. And literally has the homewrecker dress up as a devil. Mia isn't dead by the end of the movie, but her future with the company can't be great after trying to sleep with her boss. When it comes to me, you can have everything. The way the bombshell is punished usually depends on whether she's an innocent or a manipulator. This is a manifestation of the Madonna whore complex. A beautiful woman can either be in control of her sexuality, which is evil, or the passive victim of her own beauty. The evil bombshell uses her sexuality as a weapon to get what she wants. I'll give you something you've been obsessing about ever since our parents got married. Superhero movies have even given us the super villain bombshell. This character starts the movie an unsexy nerd, but then something happens and she simultaneously becomes hot and evil. Life's a bitch, now so am I. Thus her sexuality and her super villainy are inextricably linked, bringing about her downfall. Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. Mm, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. The innocent sex goddess, on the other hand, often gets killed to motivate a male character. In a version of the women in refrigerators trope. Was she such a woman? Your wife? She was the son. Or to illustrate the depravity of her world. She said, people tried to be good, but they were really sick and rotten. Adriana on The Sopranos is a perfect example of the bombshell as beautiful victim. Adriana is portrayed as a classic Venus. She draws attention for her knockout looks. God, don't transfer me now. Adriana Laserva. 
enjoys the material comforts her boyfriend Christopher's mafioso lifestyle provides. Anybody around here love the word Jimmy Choo Shoes? Oh my God, they're gorgeous. And is it known for her smarts? They said all they wanted was some information and they would leave us alone. Ultimately though, she's a Venus in the truest sense. She's defined by her loving heart. I love you very much. My only dream is that we have a happy life together. Thus, the murder of this audience favorite after she's manipulated by the FBI was a powerful emotional tool to make us feel just how irredeemable Tony and his circle were. Adriana's beauty, inside and out, is destroyed, symbolizing the corrupting nature of Tony's world. She was so beloved by viewers and creative staff alike that the writers felt actually showing her death on screen would be too brutal even for The Sopranos. I've written some of the most horrifically violent scenes on that show, but after the fact, I realized that I, that I didn't want to see Adriana get killed. While evil bombshells might be punished for their seductive transgressions, on-screen beauties in general are punished not so much for what they do, but for the animal urges they bring out in men simply by existing. And the women who play bombshells are subject to their own punishments as well. After Joe DiMaggio watched Marilyn Monroe film the famous subway great scene in The Seven Year Itch, he allegedly beat her for being so sexually provocative. Tippi Hedren was bullied and isolated on set by Alfred Hitchcock because he was obsessed with her beauty. It was the end of Marnie and um, it was just very disappointing and disturbing and um, a situation that I couldn't live with. And Megan Fox felt she couldn't fully join the Me Too movement because she would be seen as an unsympathetic victim. Women are still being shamed if they attempt to monetize their beauty. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a paramedic that was supplementing her income with an OnlyFans account was slut-shamed and doxxed by the New York Post. To this day, we act like a woman who poses for sexy photos gives up a part of her intelligence, her agency, and her soul. So what if Aphrodite comes down from her pedestal? Contemporary film and TV have been finding hidden depths and nuance in bombshells. Joan on Mad Men at first intentionally lives her life as a Marilyn Monroe-esque bombshell, but she gradually realizes that being solely what men want her to be is limiting. When Monroe dies, Joan is devastated because Joan knows the emptiness she must have felt. You're not like her. Physically a little, but don't tell me that makes you sad. This world destroyed her. And after landing the husband she always wanted isn't the fairy tale she hoped it would be, you're not a good man. She eventually finds personal satisfaction by stepping out of the Monroe archetype and asserting her brains and independence. When I talked to Ken, I realized it would be easy to turn this into an actual production company. Poison Ivy, in most of her depictions, fits the evil seductress trope to a T. Her main superpower is the ability to control men with lust-inducing pheromones. But on the series Harley Quinn, she is more defined by her environmental activism and her anxiety about letting people in. Do you remember how you diagnosed me? Sure. A classic misanthrope with abandonment issues who befriends plants to avoid human intimacy. Through her friendship and eventual coupling with Harley, we get to see an explicitly queer Ivy who, rather than exploiting the patriarchy to her advantage, actively fights against it in the male-dominated world of supervillainy. Ivy, if you could just, you know, move. It's over. So I could, I could just kill your friend. Absolutely. Over my dead body. Ah, oh, female friendships. On New Girl, Megan Fox's character Reagan actively subverts and deconstructs the actress's bombshell persona. Reagan is initially presented as a sexually intimidating creature of mystery. I've got no chance with Reagan. She's hot and she's cool and she's bisexual. But as the lawmates get to know her, they see that her unattainable hot girl facade is a smokescreen she puts up to keep people at a distance. When in an actual relationship, Reagan chokes. Yeah, I'm not good at this, obviously. So what would you say, Jess, if you were me? 
Rather than pitting a bombshell against a sexless woman in competition for a man, shows like Harley Quinn and New Girl let the sex goddess find friendship and love with other women. I mean, of course I went for you. I go nuts for big boobs. I'm a real melon felon. Reagan and Jess date the same man, which in previous bombshell stories would be a huge source of conflict. The adorable girl next door and the vamp would be expected to fight over the mediocre male. But these two very different women get along. And Jess even helps Reagan out of her emotional isolation. God, I'm crazy about it. Yes, I knew it. Likewise, when Jennifer Lopez's knockout Ramona makes her big pole dancing entrance in Hustlers, we watch this less from her patron's eyes than from those of her female protege to be Destiny. Hustlers unpacks the bombshell mindset as a facet of the American dream and explores why, in a world where a woman has limited economic options, the male gaze may be her biggest asset. But this whole country is a strip club. You got people tossing the money and people doing the dance. This is also an example of how more nuanced bombshells of color have emerged with the rise of sex positivity and intersectional feminism. In classic Hollywood, bombshell status was usually kept from women of color, who were often sexualized but not deified for that sexuality. Margarita Carmen Cancino didn't become a star until her name was anglicized to Rita Hayworth and she had undergone painful electrolysis sessions to make her hairline look less characteristically Latina. Black bombshells like Dorothy Dandridge, Lena Horne, and Eartha Kitt all faced serious professional hurdles that kept Marilyn Monroe levels of superstardom out of reach. And Hispanic bombshells were often characterized as uncontrollable, feeding into the spicy Latina stereotype. She sounds enchanting. Enchanting, bewildering, bewitching, intoxicating, devastating. The bombshell represents beauty and sexuality, two things our society connects highly with youth. For the bombshell who doesn't die young in the prime of her beauty, the alternative is, in viewers' eyes, almost worse. She gets old. As Elizabeth Day writes in The Guardian, we do not expect our sex symbols to age. Yet in life and in fiction, the story goes on long after youth passes. It used to be if someone needed to see me in reception, they were delivering flowers. That's why stories that expand on the bombshell beyond her surface pleasures are so important. All people ever see is Marilyn Monroe. As soon as they realize I'm not her, they run. The love goddesses of myth were complex, fallible, recognizably human characters. There's no reason why modern storytelling should be any less nuanced than what was carved in marble thousands of years ago. We need stories where the body isn't destiny, where pretty people are asexual, where older women still get some, and where everyone can access their inner love goddess. When I'm good, I'm very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. This is The Take. What do you want our take on next? This video is brought to you by Reptown, offering premium jeans at revolutionary prices. If you spent the majority of 2020 in sweatpants, wouldn't it be a fun change to upgrade your style? Revtown jeans are the perfect place to start. The company was founded by former Under Armour executives who brought the ethos of comfort to the brand. Their jeans use proprietary fabric consisting of Italian milled denim infused with the same material used in yoga pants. Revtown offers free shipping and free returns, so there's zero risk to giving these jeans a try. Our team members have been living in their high-rise skinny jeans and the sharp slim fit. If you care to join us, click the link in the description below to upgrade your wardrobe now.